God's Secret Storehouse, The Blueprint of Desire, by Terence Wilburn. What is God's Secret Storehouse, The Blueprint of Desire? This book is a series of powerful prophecy messages that God gave me during seasons of revelation concerning how to get real financial peace. It is the labor of much prayer and dedication. I was about to seal it in my archives as a personal guide to continue to enhance my own prosperity. But I decided that it would be better for you to get your hands on this miracle work instead. You see, the information I am about to reveal to you within these pages has been designed in a peculiar way. Over nearly ten years, I have journaled, logged, tested, and studied. This is a timeless manual that will shape your destiny to one of great wealth and prosperity. If you do the things inside these pages, you will be blessed. But if you just let this book sit on your sofa, kitchen table, or end up in the back of your bookshelf, then shame on you. Because you would have missed one great opportunity to live the most magnificent life ever which is to fulfill the plan that God has for your life. Jeremiah 29 verse 11 Jim Rohn once said, When you are ready for your destiny, it will meet you on the path you travel up ahead. Now that you are ready to meet your destiny, this book will take you from rags to riches, from poverty to prosperity, from broke to hope, and from nothing to something, much better than anything you have ever thought or dreamed. If you are ready to live that kind of life, one that you and your family will be thankful for, a life that produces miracles, transforms lives, and blesses all who practice this breakthrough, then turn the page and see what great things God is about to do for you. Do you want to receive God's power? Let me thank you personally for taking the time to change your future by reading this book. Never has God's power been so influential in the lives of people across the globe. Every month, I release a prophetic newsletter for those who want to know what God is doing today. For many years, I have been a student of the Bible. Before entering the ministry, I spent thousands of hours studying the Word of God and learning about the gifts of the Spirit, while curiously investigating what made these people of the Bible so great. I began to see patterns in their spiritual lives that I identified in myself. I sought the Holy Spirit to see if these things were relevant to the church now and he began to show me exactly why they are and how their purpose is for this time now. We are living in the greatest time since the days of Christ. Yet, many do not know or understand this profound truth. God still speaks, shows signs, wonders, and works miracles. The good news is that if you can receive it, he has given me the understanding of how to teach you to take authority and live your best life now. Are you ready to walk in the power and authority of God? Do you really want to see your life change for the better and flourish in prosperity? Would you like to live a peaceful life and see your desire for your family to prosper physically and spiritually? If you want that kind of life, then I have a special gift for you. Within this newsletter are powerful scriptures for healing, prophetic words to help you defeat the devil, and prayers for your prosperity. The information contained in the Blueprint of Desire is the work of my personal devotion to discover true kingdom wealth combined with the wisdom of prophecy and knowledge of the scriptures, to deliver insight to you, so that you may live a life of inspiration and revelation concerning how to be blessed and prosperous. This is the true mindset of those who are successful. However, the author doesn't imply that you will become rich or wealthy by following the principles in this book. Instead, by providing practical wisdom of scripture and wealth training information, the book sets a guideline to help you navigate through hard times. In short, this book will assist you in finding better days ahead and in pursuing financial peace and a breakthrough in life. Other wealth trainers and success coaches like Anthony Robbins, Brian Tracy, Napoleon Hill, John C. Maxwell, Seth Godin, and Tom Hopkins have inspired the teachings in this book. However, this work is in no way derivative of those authors' works. The author is confident that following the teachings of such individuals has a proven track record for successful training and forward thinking, which may include, but is not limited to, financial peace and spiritual prosperity. The reader should understand that it does not take a miracle to grasp the proper obtaining and usage of money. However, for the person willing to employ the power of God's Spirit to create an explosion in their thinking and change the way they view money, it may take just that. It happens that God intended not only to bring His Spirit,
but also his resources to all people and nations, providing help as well. Understand that money is not the root of all evil, but money answers all things. Ecclesiastes 10 verse 19 That is why this book is written, so that God's people can enter into a covenant focused on building wealth and bringing hope to the world through acts of faith, demonstrating our love by fulfilling the promises God has given in Joel 2, Acts 2 and Revelation 2 verses 22 to 26. This book is for the visionary soul. This is a threefold prophetic blessing for you to grow in your love and devotion to God, answer your call to work in the kingdom of God, minister grace to the many souls you will encounter. If you are ready to discover who you truly are and move forward with a kingdom-mindedness, then this book is guaranteed to fulfill your desires. You will have more do more and be more. The blessings, favor, and wisdom of God will accompany you. When you are blessed, encourage someone else. Introduction. Hi, I'm Terrence Wilburn, best-selling author and success coach, and I want to show you how to live your best life now by using a simple prayer of faith. But before I share this secret, I want to know if you are ready for your focus, life, and vision to come together to create your best life now. If so, then I have just the thing for you. Aside from this book, I have created a lifestyle course on how to start living your most favored life yet. What I mean by that is, I want to offer you a free invitation to check out more of what I am discussing in this book, but live, via your laptop or smartphone. I am sharing all of what I know about living the best life and how to start seeing prosperity and success in your life right now. Starting today, you can do just that. People all over the world read my books and I have not had a single complaint from any of the 15 different countries where they are available. Hundreds of people visit my website to contact me from all over the world and tell me how their lives have changed after reading just one of my books. I can say I have truly been blessed by the Master's hands, and I want to show you how to do the same. God gave me the passion to create, and from that passion, an Internet business named Wilburn Media was born. Through this business, I've created hundreds of products that have become so profitable that I can now command money whenever I need to take care of my family and live a lifestyle full of God's favor. I take trips, exciting vacations, drive brand new cars, and have highly profitable investments to do things I never thought possible until I discovered the principles inside this book. The secret that I want to share with you is this. After many years of reading, searching, studying, attending college, and pursuing degrees, I discovered the secret that works for anyone ready to transform their life. Whether you're struggling with being dead broke, dealing with past due student loans, moving back in with your parents, living paycheck to paycheck in small apartments, facing eviction, or experiencing homelessness, this secret can help you become the most successful person in your family. Whether you aspire to be an author, a respected leader in your city, or just plain rich, this is for you. I should know best, because this is my story. It is how I found wealth in God's Word and the revelation to live it every day. Now, I am married and live in a beautiful home with my family. It is more than anything I ever thought I could achieve. I live a truly blessed life, and now I want to show you the secrets to having more and being more. The good news is, I am now ready to share this revelation with you and show you how to live your best life so that you may be, do, and have more. Trouble up ahead. Imagine a bus filled with passengers headed nowhere in particular, and yet everyone on board arrives at their destination. It seems contradictory, but that's what happens. They are expecting something different but doing the same thing, and that is the definition of insanity. If that sounds like something you've been doing for a while, then what I'm about to tell you will give you an upper hand and get you back on track to arrive much sooner than you intended. Faith comes through desire. You will never reach your destination until you map out the journey. A life of success, less stress, and living blessed is paved through the desire to receive power. If your desire fire has been extinguished by put-downs, setbacks, or lack of emotional support, then having a written map of your destination will ignite your fire once again. Why are most people not aware? Most people think having a written plan is foolish and that it is somehow wasting time. They believe faster is equal to making a greater attempt toward progress. 
a lot of New Age garbage teaches that your fate has been assigned to you by positive spirit guides and the universe, all working together to promote your fulfillment. But faith is a principle, one that produces action toward an expected outcome of blessing and favor. Faith is the key to the vehicle that propels you toward victory. The reason people are either talented or especially gifted. Everybody has something. To find out what it is, I authored this book as a guide to help you recognize God's plan for your life. To become the trailblazer you are meant to be, you must acknowledge a dream that is alive in you, and its depth must become your foundation. An old proverb says, To build a skyscraper, dig deep. For an average-sized house, a nine-inch slab suffices. Destiny is nigh. Will you take the key? Your mission, should you accept, is to keep the faith and finish the race. But you need God's favor to do so. Luke 2 verse 52 Your life can take a radical shape if you just take action. And if you act in faith, you will succeed. God knows the plans for your life and wants you to succeed. Read Jeremiah 29 verse 11. Remember, eagles soar at high altitudes and the only way to fly is to know your wingspan. Otherwise, you will stay grounded like the rest of the turkeys. On this journey, you will learn to soar high above the eagles and possess the grace and faith to do the impossible. Let's begin. Chapter 1. What attracts me to desire? Understanding the characteristics you love about life is the basis of desire, which is how God rewards people. The question is, are you a receiver or a rewarder? Most people believe in some form of higher power. Power can be defined as supremacy or control, and to a degree, the word enthralls people with a sense of urgency to acquire some of it. But what they do not realize is that there is always a higher power. Do you believe in a higher power? The Bible declares that the highest power is Christ's resurrection. When he rose from the grave, he made a statement that proclaims what really took place. All power has been given to me. This means that there is an exact benefit that we now can obtain and possess in our lives if we receive by faith that Jesus was not just a man, but the Son of God whose death on the cross gave us new life. I was studying a while ago and contemplated the direction of my life. These words seemed to leap right off the pages of my Bible. The Lord was trying to tell me something simpler than I would ever believe. You see, sometimes we can make things overly complex. When all God wants to do is teach us all of what He has to say about each situation that may come by in life. If you had not heard by now, that power resides in us. Yes, it's true. God is saying, Do as I've told you to do about life fulfillment and the calling of ministry. This means you qualify to receive the love God unconditionally wants to place on your life, like a seal of approval. He genuinely wants fulfillment involved in everything you do in life. Well, that reflects the life of a disciple. Wouldn't you agree? Whether you sit in the pews or stand in the pulpit, we are all part of something greater. Together, we belong to one great congregation, called to be disciples and to reflect on the importance of its relationship rewards. When we believe that Christ died for our sins, we can lay down our troubles at the feet of the cross. But in my earlier days, I suffered from bad thoughtology. When you believe something that is not in the Bible, because you see other people doing so. Mistakenly, I thought that being saved meant living in poverty, because Jesus was poor. Imagine a life where all the joy is on the other side of the fence, but you cannot ever step over there, because God will strike you down with lightning. That was my mentality for a long time. I was not enjoying the life God had given me. I read my Bible all day long till I fell asleep or got a vision of heavenly angels singing a new song. Guess which one happened the most? Well, I can tell you I have not had many open visions of angels. Occasionally I did fall asleep and dream of them. Was that because I read my Bible all day? I can't say. Either way, I did live like that for a while, going to church every service, speaking in other tongues, and reading the small print in my Bible commentary, until my head hurt and eyes cried out for rest. When the offering plate came around, I would suddenly clench up in fear because I knew I was dead broke. Does that reflect the kind of person you are? It was a humbling experience when I would think to myself, how come I know more about the Bible than probably most people my age and half of the people shouting around this church? But they're the ones who seem to be prospering. They are the ones driving nice cars, wearing fancy clothes, 
while I can't afford a $20 offering. I started to think, if I was not to blame, then God was. I pouted. Why is he doing this to me? The more I thought about it, the angrier I felt. Then it happened. I started to question God. But I always heard, oh no. Do not question God. You cannot question God. God works in mysterious ways. The voices echoed in my head. I do not care. I nearly shouted aloud. I was fuming. If there was steam coming out of my ears, I wouldn't have even known. I was ready to let him have it. When I got home and got ready to pray, I said, God, you have brought me out of bondage, and I know now that I am born of the righteous spirit. I am linked with the blessing of your friend, Abraham, and God, you promised his seed would see your glory. You promised that we, his seed, would live in a land of the free-flowing, with milk and honey. God, you said that we, his seed, will flourish in the land of plenty. God, you promised that land to the prophet Moses, and showed the prophet Ezekiel the dry bones coming alive again. But why am I, an obedient prophet, so broken and poor? I'm begging for your help. As I sat there on the floor, tears streaming down my face, I heard a voice say, Because you don't believe that I can bless you, and you have no hope, that I do want you to prosper. Proverbs 13 verse 12 My mind was blown. I heard that voice as clear as bells ringing. The rebuke was so awesome I couldn't speak. Some people would never acknowledge that they heard God say anything like that. Currently, it is comical. I can laugh about it. When I received that word from God, I felt so free. I took inventory on myself and my beliefs about money. I found that I had a bunch of religious traditions and details, which I had gotten from other people, about my abilities, gifts, talents, and whether I was capable of being prosperous. The hardest part was admitting that I had limiting beliefs about myself, which hindered me in every capacity, even in my walk with God, combined that with a religious mindset and a bunch of old-time traditions, and what that equals to is a formula for adopting a superstitious poverty lifestyle. Eventually, I began to understand that God had given me a gift for prosperity, and once I started to believe, I started to receive. That was one of the most compelling experiences I've ever had. Now I have more of God's sustaining power, providence, in my life. Once I made a positive confession and began to agree with God, the storehouse of blessing open to me, and now it will be for you too. We are a blessed people. Hallelujah. God's thoughts on poverty. It's like a birthday party the parents want to throw for their only child. The parents go out and work extremely hard, save money, and prepare. Only when the child finds out that he she is having a birthday party, they make other plans and never show up. The parents are waiting at home for the child to show up, and enjoy all of the particularly good things they have for the child, but they do not, and so the parents never get to show their affection for that child. My friend, this is the way it is now. This chapter is not about resolving problems quickly. It certainly is not about your satisfaction either. God will not force you to live that way. If you do not want it, He is not going to force you to want it. But be thankful that there are principles that speak to us about our relationship with God to help us to prosper. Do we appreciate salvation? Do we like our life in Christ? Are we living in covenant with God? Do we understand the promises He made? Are we in agreement with His Word? These are questions we must ask ourselves. The circle of dimension. What is the key to revelation? The answer is fasting. During a season of fasting, God woke me up in the night and laid this book on my heart. I did not know it was a book. When I started, it had only begun with a few words. I just began to write it as a letter. This is an excerpt from that letter. It is 2.54 a.m. on September 12th. I have no clue as to what this particular time means for you or what it offers for you. But just as sure as I'm writing this letter to you, I heard God speak. Let me assure you that I am the Lord's servant man, and I go and speak as he wills it. Please take time to concentrate and meditate on the Lord Jesus' word before you read what I have to say to you next. I am the Lord God's servant, and I was once a youth at risk. I have faced opposition at every turn of my limbs. The devil tried to kill me with drugs, alcohol, sex, and other vices. By the grace of God, I survived. But I am positive this is a plague on our youth today. The new anointing of God is poured out into the youth of this day, 
who have a radically awesome praise in their belly. In Revelation, John was told to go unto the water and to take the little book from the angel and say to him, Give me the book. As he did so, the angel instructed him to eat it and said that it would taste like honey but be bitter in his belly. That is the youth of this day. They have an awesome praise in their mouths for the kingdom of God, but the devil has given them a cancer of the mind. Therefore, the word sits bitter in their belly. But if we instruct them with angelic words, my God, they would have a word ready to burst forth and slay the devil and his army of darkness. Sadly, because many of our elders are succumbing to daily deception, the youth do not have instructors. Media programs us to forget religious activity, seek self-gratification, and create wealth idols, and sadly, some who were faithful to the church are yielding. I am reminded of the prophet Jeremiah when he said, Seek the old roads and ask of it, which ways and ye were good. God's people must give attention to this instruction to follow back through those old roads to receive salvation from that which is good to see through the lens of Christ his anointing, his sacrifice, and his understanding, and honor these things. A call to faith. My friend, do you still believe in Jesus? Have you ever trusted him as your Savior? If so, then, I need your help. This word is yours. God placed you into this word. I know that you are one of the 2,033,046 people across this majestic country of ours that will not lean on your own understanding. I am not here to reveal all mysteries of the world, to offer you false teachings, nor reveal society issues. God is asking you to take a stand this day, to take back your salvation through fear and trembling at the name of Jesus. One shall chase a thousand, and two shall put ten thousand to flight. Deuteronomy 30 verse 30, 2, gives the multiplication factor of God's kingdom, that we shall increase with the little we may have, if we put it in the hands of those who run for God. That means, if we can save three youths, that is 30,000 souls that will be saved for God's kingdom. The youth have the strength to run, and with your help, they shall run well. Isaiah 40 verse 31. This is where my ministry steps into the light of this scripture, by instructing the word in their belly. The youth in Christ of today are radical, both boys, girls, young men and young women have a different outlook on life and a holy desire to see the body of Christ arise to say, Look, this is who I am. My testimony is gained by the liberty of what God has made me, and to God be the glory. Those who wish to serve the Lord with their talents offer thunderous praise that shakes the foundation of hell. For them, there is no time to hang around the devil's playground. My duty as a prophet is to build up the body of Christ. Ephesians 4 verse 11 as such, my desire is to reach those spread throughout the globe by the scope of Christian media, i.e., music and video. The Lord has revealed unto me seven prophetic secrets that will empower people to obtain the favor and blessing of God. I will be releasing this knowledge through a book entitled God's Secret Storehouse. The remaining parts of this letter have been excluded due to time-sensitive prophetic words that can only be revealed in a later season. Wow! Going back! and reading that material gives me goosebumps. This book is now in your hands, and has been the process of nearly a decade. Literally hundreds of prophetic encounters with people, and calling on the right hand of God to save them, including me, out of poverty, lack, and not enough. What that means to you is this. Your time with lack and not enough could be over, as soon as you receive the words in this book. To quote the popular gospel artist Dietrich Haddon, I feel like shouting somebody. God is good all the time. In my book from Nay to Ye, Psalm 23, Prophetic Prayer, I taught one of the prophetic aspects of how to get exactly what you need without failure. In the book, I used the 23rd Psalm to illustrate that a covenant is an agreement, and just like you can agree with people, you can make a covenant with God, which links you with spiritual protection of prosperity and abundance. If you want to enhance your prayer life, I suggest that you get that book. It will go hand in hand with this one by helping you to line up faith-based action that will shape God's plan for your life and is a great read if you love to help others and get involved with an active move of God. Quick start. If you are considering taking a step of faith to launch something new, see the chapter in this book entitled The Seven Keys and the Seven Roles.
It is the will of God to release this storehouse of blessing to you, so that you may overflow with the abundance to fill up your life with favor and increase others with that which will overflow from your life. Make a new confession. This name the thing may be too much for me, but God says that if I take a step out in faith, He will give me a blessing. The Lord is waiting. He wants to pour out His most abundant favor and blessing upon you. He is ready to pour out grace and protect you and your loved ones from these evil and turbulent times. Many are fighting a spirit of poverty, living from check to check, unpaid debts, and being underpaid. The Bible says, The borrower is slave to the lender. Proverbs 22 verse 7 I found this out the hard way. Poverty is truly a curse. If you are familiar with the term, it is like a hex or sorcery. This sort of curse is spiritual, but sometimes the Christian, yes, one of God's children, can bring this curse upon themselves. God, himself, may even curse them. Malachi 2 verse 2 As you read these scriptures and reflect on your life, the good news is, even though evil is ever-present, your life is secure in God's storehouse, and even destruction has a purpose. It could be that because you are made for so much more, God is testing you for the glorious days to come. But in order to turn this around, you must begin a daily confession. You can step out of this mess and get a blessing. When you do, never miss another opportunity to be a channel of blessing to others. Psalm 14 verse 18 In Kings 2 colon 9, a young prophet by the name of Elisha found himself asking for something that he knew only the Lord could do, that he would receive a double portion blessing. After he did, he went about proving God's favor to bless him with what he'd asked. My point is that you need to know that living a blessed life is not just for you. Just like Elisha, you may use God's miracle-working power to become a channel of blessing for other people, meaning it's not just for you, but God desires to work for those you will encounter who need the same effective miracle power operating in their lives. Change is about having your portion to do something miraculous for others knowing it may be enough for you and your family's needs, but acknowledging that somebody else needs to get their household in order too. That is why God has given me this message, to help somebody else tap into special privileges of abundance. I dare you to ask God to make you a channel of blessing. Once you do, your life will never be the same. Admit it. With all the trouble in your life and all the attempts to destroy your mind, body, and soul, there are times that if you are broke, it makes the problem far worse to deal with, especially health, a marriage-slash-relationship, children, and other family issues. Let me say, if you are operating your life from exhausted emotions and constantly tackling obstacles, eventually it affects your spirit, which has eternal consequences. If you feel this is happening, you should take charge and make your life a blessing to others. By living full of potential for the sake of others, you may recover all that has been lost and truly be a channel of blessing. Therefore, heaven will smile on you. This is the secret to accessing the storehouse. If you want success and want to tap into God's unlimited resources, then you must be willing to set aside your desires to help somebody else. Only then will your business, family, ministry, or any other circumstance that arises be restored. Because you chose to help others. God will choose to help you to lead your family, friends, and loved ones with a character and integrity that can't be superimposed on or defeated. With this new level of stewardship comes a greater level of prosperity. Luke 12 verse 48 Use a sheet of paper and pen to assess yourself. What are your strong areas? What are you lacking in character, integrity, or morality? God knows, so be clear and honest. You may want to choose someone close who knows you well and cares about you unconditionally to help. Position yourself for providence, which is what you will have to recognize to know your own limits. Reveal your heart, and God will reveal His true purpose for your life. Don't think that it's strange. The Lord has been speaking to you that a word was coming. Now, hear the Spirit and understand instruction. Chapter 2 What Attracts Desire to Me Understanding the power of empowering beliefs and linking them to your confession is the most important way to have a positive outlook on life. Belief is the expectation of an event, or it can be thought of as your destination. 
Knowing how you will arrive is a great way to start your day. Add the power of positive confession, and nothing can stand in your way. Take the appropriate time to thoughtfully consider your intentions. Set aside how you currently view yourself. Read aloud through the following declarations, and very honestly grab hold of each one that applies to your situation. This will give you limitless ability of mental and spiritual power to locate yourself and map out your destination. You must reflect on a sense of well-being and some of the past events you have overcome. Take a moment to acknowledge the areas in your life that need a little cleaning out and be ready to do the work necessary to move forward in this chapter. If you are dealing with massive emotional or spiritual issues, such as anger, depression, or manifestations of physical violence, and have not sought out any professional Christian counseling, I suggest you pursue that end. Remember, your confession is about speaking faithful words with a sense of truth that captures who you are becoming and helps you to see what you'll be when you get there. If you are in a state of constant disharmony, you will not thrive but remain in a state of constant survival, which eats away at your happiness and health. Be kind to yourself. Know that your spiritual healing may take a while, and if you are committed to a lifetime journey of self-forgiveness, then you will be happy to remain in that place of healing. If you suspect that the above-mentioned emotional forewarnings are taking place in your life, you may need further professional treatment such as pastoral care, therapy, and or family counseling. To help you cope with those emotional behaviors, empowered people can show the level of spiritual depth and prayer to reach out and help others. Using the word empower as an acrostic, we can define the exceptional characteristics of people who can move mountains with confession, emotion, motivation, purpose, obligation, will, energy, revelation. Keep in mind that no one is born with these traits and you can begin using them by starting a consistent prayer and devotion time to search God's Word. Now, let's take a more in-depth look at Empower. Emotion, the ability to show feeling. Purpose, the ability to accomplish. Obligation, the ability to keep promises. Will, the ability to control an outcome. Energy, the ability to complete. Revelation, the ability to see the unseen. The way to get empowered with passion is to live with a relentless love toward others. And in the seasons ahead, you shall reach all new levels of greatness. According to Maslow's hierarchy of the five human needs, self-worth, self-confidence, love-slash-belonging, personal well-being, and physical and emotional needs, each gives us a clue into our true self. To know oneself is to be like God. Each person, at the core level, understands our own self-worth, which is to know our limits. Understanding this truth, that we all have limits, will help us better express the following statement of commitment. Strengthening belief. Think of something you believe in wholeheartedly and ask yourself, how does my belief affect me? Does this belief strengthen my positive heartfelt emotion? Does this belief amaze me and touch my innermost being? Has this belief given me the motivation to perform at my peak? Will I realize my true potential to actualize this belief? Now strengthen your beliefs. How does it really empower my life? Does this belief empower me to set achievable goals? Does this belief help me in building confidence, removing ignorance, or removing obstacles, repurpose misfortune, destroy self-pity, or inform me of the importance of my purpose outside of selfish interest and make an active effort to see my loved one succeed? Will this belief enhance my vision and empower my dream goal? Does this belief prove my passion for succeeding? If wealth is a goal for you, then write your amount. Money is the currency for trade of your service to people, and there is more than enough to go around. But to count yourself as one who has been fortunate to master this game depends on carefully focused planning. Think, how will belief really strengthen me? Does this belief allow me to know when there seems to be no hope in sight? Will this belief stop any emotional pain, real or imagined panic attacks, which are a series of preventable and predictable behaviors? Does this belief help me to defeat old patterns and disassociate attachments to people that cause damage to my progress? If so, I will make a purposeful effort to immediately cancel any association to unworthy relationships which are causing me grief, pain, or suffering, which then releases me from the bad advice of such persons. Does this belief help me to cease all forms of ungodliness? Am I able to firmly trust my own thinking? 
or have I been standing on a broken crutch? Does this belief allow me to function in the strength I require to become a unique person, set out to accomplish acts of grace and kindness in God's kingdom? Can this belief challenge my progressive thinking towards the work necessary to create change? Do I agree to complete the assigned work to me and see that it is carried out in its entirety? Or does it cause my mind to enter a state of fear, which degenerates more of the potential I should be using to make myself stronger? Commit the belief to empower your life. Belief empowers you to live life at full throttle, because you will now have more confidence to do so. You will no longer continue any habits that hinder your progress. You will have the courage to conquer small challenges, face fear squarely, and rebuke the enemy who tries to influence your thoughts and destroy those you love with hindering behaviors. I am a great person and so are you. If not now, then you will eventually be. It is not about what the world thinks of us, nor does it matter that they have their definition of who we are as individuals. Being true to who God says I am and who you are is what matters most. I am the type of person that desires importance and influence. I feel whole for the first time in my life, and I have been in times past both in debt and poor, but I didn't let that feeling of desperation suffocate me into a life of dispersion. I knew I had to fight in order to live the life I wanted. Not some meager life, funded by the government and the powers that be. Now that I have learned to do just that, I feel empowered enough to say to you that if you are broke today, the best thing for you to do is recognize that you need help and you must know how to go about getting it. You are faithful, and you can pull yourself up out of scarcity. It is a mindset that suggests there is no possible way for you to live a life filled with abundance, because there just isn't enough for everyone. However, if you live according to a new standard, make a new confession for a stronger heart and a free, positively focused mind, and actively work to make it happen, you will form your own definition of success. Those beliefs will one day empower others with the motivation to help you succeed. God has continually blessed me with favor, and I am safe because God's love creates new paths of movement in the kingdom. Knowing this fact strengthens me when I feel low when it seems as if the world is out to get me and the enemy wants to destroy all my challenging work or steal my joy. This confession stands up strong and tall, making me feel like I can defeat giants and lifting my hope that better days are ahead. I feel like I finally have a mission in life, to support my family and their undertakings, but ultimately to lead them into their destiny as a kingdom-minded people. I know now what it is like to love the way God does. I am empowered by knowing that expressing love to other people gives me peace to be patient and strength to fight for faithfulness. If I can take needless compromising shortcuts, then I can take the high road. If I can feel frustration and mistrust, then I can know that God is with me and trust in Him to remain patient with me as I may make any mistakes along the way. This confession will help me work through any anguish or pain I may experience at times. But whether I am at work or taking some time for myself, I can trust my thinking about how my actions are truly for the benefit of including others. Consider Yourself Chapter 3 How to Be Faithful with Desire Learning about your disempowering beliefs makes you more aware because it is never the positive things that get in our way. It is the negative outlook that can really defeat you. Often, when I meet people and talk with them for a while, I can identify whether they have limiting beliefs or not. We've all experienced those thoughts, and what I've learned in life is that we harbor regrets over our inner thoughts, which we repeat to ourselves like a broken record. These thoughts lead to actions that become habitual, and before we know it, we realize we are stuck or frozen in our growth, feeling like we're not living up to the standards of our ideal selves. Faith is the key that breaks this chain. In life, every person has a portion of faith to use or throw away, but without faith, it is impossible to do anything. You could not get up in the morning unless you had faith to rise. You could not sit down in a chair unless you had faith that the chair would hold you up. Everything you see around you is first created by thought and then an action called faith. Faith decides how you will live and determines how far you go in life to achieve your dreams. Often, we look for others to blame for something that did not turn out the way we intended. Although those are upsetting moments, most of the time those are not the determining factors that change our lives. I began to realize this when I began to want more personal success, 
career achievement, and family goals, but I continually blamed others for the failure to accomplish it. Does this sound familiar? There is an enemy inside us all, and daily it is stopping us from getting what we want most. That enemy has a name, the subconscious mind. Your subconscious mind retains the lifelong existence you have had thus far. 24-7, 365, it is bombarded with information, and it doesn't take long to hear that inner voice become louder and consistently negative. Soon it becomes a non-stop frustration party taking place right behind your forehead. What's going on inside the think tank? The central control to your body and soul begins to signal to others that somewhere you went off track with your dreams, goals, and aspirations, and exchanged them for fears, failures, and frustrations. Just as in the previous chapter, take the time to outline some of the beliefs you have that may be preventing you from being, doing, and having more. Take an honest assessment of yourself and look at all the stuff that is truly hindering you from greatness. Below are some of the disempowering beliefs that prevent us from doing the things we desire. What are the painful consequences that cheat you out of a life well-deserved? I am not smart enough. I am not worthy. This is the way I am. I was born alone. I must go at it alone. Someone will reach out and push me. I have no friends because nobody likes me. I am not attractive enough. I was born to the wrong family or the wrong time. I cannot. Using Maslow's hierarchy of five human needs, self-worth, self-confidence, love-slash-belonging, personal well-being, physical and emotional needs, ask yourself, what disempowering beliefs result from these statements? Are these beliefs causing me to lose confidence in myself? Does my spirituality defeat or reinforce its purpose? Do they have a solid foundation to which I can stand? Or do they lie to me? and steal my birthright? Do these statements lie to me and cause me to lie to myself? If so, do I lie to others about the things I can do? Do I fail to take the initiative to change the things I find wrong in my life because having these beliefs makes me feel weak, have low esteem, and feel malignant unworthiness? Do I turn simple, solvable matters into all-out war when I feel disrespected? Now decide how much the price is really costing you and that you are no longer willing to pay the price it has cost. Analyze your disempowering beliefs, ridiculous or absurd. This disempowering belief is ridiculous because my foundation is God, who created the universe, is all-powerful, and gave his son's life for me. I accept everything that comes with that life, which includes power over spiritual and physical wealth. Disempowering beliefs are absurd because I believe in God and his life-changing power. God's word tells me that because he owns the world, my birthright is blessed, and I claim my birthright. I now take my life back by force. Everything that was taken from me spiritually, leaving me broken and poor physically, I now send back to the enemy who sowed it against me. New blessings are the reward for waking up. If I couldn't, I would be dead already. But currently, I am not. I confess that my faith is boldly accomplishing God's purpose and plan for my life. The person I learned these disempowering beliefs from may have meant well, but clearly, they were not worthy of role modeling for me because they were not an expert, nor were they producing the positive results experts always do. Reflect. What will it ultimately cost if disempowering beliefs continue? I may have a complete physiological or psychological breakdown from stress and worry. I may lose everything I have worked so hard to achieve. It will cost me the love and care of others whom I love and care for. It will cause me to go through life alone and afraid, causing me to become emotionally unstable, unfruitful in my thoughts and relationship connections. What about relationships? What will my disempowering beliefs ultimately cost in those areas? It will cause me to sabotage any relationship bonds and hinder the achievement of many of my principal goals in life. It will cost the way people perceive me. It will cost me the loss of companionship by lacking compassion, love, and kindness, which is essential to all the things right in my life. I will be like the donkey, with no farm to plow, but with a bridle and a heavy load of troubles and emotional baggage hanging on its back, too dumb and too old to drop the load and stop chasing the dangling carrot. What will it cost me financially, physically, and spiritually? Financially. I will be ruined, and I cannot pay with my own life. Spiritually, 
I will sacrifice my harvest that is coming from all the good things I have sown, which are waiting for me when God ordains their time and season. Physically, it will cost me to forfeit my earthly goods such as safety, shelter, and other basic needs. Simply put, because of these beliefs, my health will suffer, and it will cost me to contract disease and sickness that will eventually cost my life before it's time. What will it cost my family and loved ones if I don't change this belief? If I do not change this disempowering belief, it may perpetuate a poor mindset that has been handed down to me by my parents and others, directly impacting my calling and true purpose with disproportionate circumstances. Simply put, any of my loved ones will experience a type of disease by living in continuous exposure to my otherwise poisonous and infectious way of thinking. Here is your text formatted for readability without changing any content. Which empowering beliefs can be substituted for old beliefs? I believe I have a purpose on earth to be a change agent for my family, community, and region, ushering positive transformations. I acknowledge the presence of a watchful and guiding God whose hands lead and empower me to fulfill this mission. I have the power within me to save others from the same conditions I was once enslaved to but am now free from. I now know the purpose of every situation is to strengthen me for the journey to reach my destiny, and by using my faith, I can maneuver any obstacle that I will encounter. I am set to believe that I can do all things through Him who strengthens me, for it is God who empowers me. I have the right as a citizen of the kingdom to live with purpose, cultivating leadership qualities that attract others to me. My sole mission in life is to deliver a shield of God's love to as many hurting souls as I meet. My only test is endurance, so I will not be swift or so strong, but have endurance till the end. This is my new belief, and I believe it will empower me. What will I have to believe in order to succeed? Everything the Bible says about who I am to God. Every word of the Christian faith must reign true to my heart. I have uninterrupted 24-7 access to God, a private hotline I can call any moment to receive help in my time of need. God is in complete control and will help me accomplish goals, so I must be patient and learn to wait on Him. Who's already succeeding here? What beliefs set them apart and help them achieve? Insert name is already succeeding in this area. He, she believes wholeheartedly that faith in God will supply everything needed. What's necessary to believe for me to succeed in this situation? I must believe wholeheartedly in my Christian faith that God is real and wants to bless me with my heart's desires. The blood of Jesus covers me, and whatever has happened to me in the past has all been for a greater purpose that will be known to me later on my journey. My foundation is secure in God, and I have a home waiting for me. I can be great and do wonderful things. There is no fear in Jesus, and I will succeed with this new belief. Now decide once and for all that I am no longer willing to pay the price they are charging me for my life. How is this belief ridiculous or absurd? The belief is absurd because I can find happiness now. Even during difficult moments of pain and anguish, I can discover clarity and joy. Storms are part of life, and sometimes emotional pain is inevitable but the Bible promises that joy will come afterward. I can always find joy. Money measures my work's value, and the reward matches the energy I choose to exchange. I cannot find peace and joy solely in wealth. Abundance is what I desire, but money does not possess joy. Joy comes from the eternal substance within me. It's a God-given virtue that I must continually tap into to experience this gift. I've mixed up happiness with contentment which I haven't fully grasped until now, but I am now aware and grateful, knowing I have God's favor to discover what happiness means according to His plans for my life. I reject the notion that I must resemble, compete with, or envy others. I don't even know these people and their possessions, if not stolen. Don't provide the peace I have in my life. I am content with what I have, cherishing each day above ground. Do not get stuck in the nonstop must make more thought process. When you function in that way, you may end up acquiring a lot of stuff, but it will never be an exceptionally large fortune, just a lot of things you are working endlessly to pay off. 
You must make up in your mind to delete this kind of belief right now before it speedily turns into greed and leads to more of the disempowering belief that got you there. Typically, such thinking is engulfed by a fear of poverty, which does not benefit anyone. Gaining the world, but losing your soul behind this endlessly destructive belief ultimately turns your contempt toward the poor and yourself. It reflects an incomplete outlook on life, contrary to why you sought success and the stewardship of God's resources. See clearly, what will it cost your relationships? Missing the opportunity to nurture, love, and support the people in your life whom you call family is crucial to acknowledge. People often equate busyness with chasing the almighty dollar, but in reality, their preoccupation with business prevents them from investing the time needed to maintain relationships. Think clearly. What will it cost physically and financially to maintain success and relationships? Physically, overwork can exhaust the body, leading to emotional and physical fatigue, and often resulting in feelings of frustration, irritability, or sadness, as emotions are intertwined with our actions. This is why the Bible advises us to do everything for the glory of God. 2 Corinthians 1 verse 20 Avoid overworking in pursuit of money and refrain from working excessively day and night for it. Financially, this belief of working overtime until you drop so there can be more money on the check at the end of the week is deceptive. I am sure this will cause you more problems in your home if you have a spouse or children you are trying to remain close to. Often when the check comes, the pay was not worth it because everybody is upset that you were not there to enjoy the benefits of having some money to spend. You are always busy with work. This belief has an adverse effect on most anyone, and we have all been subject to this belief, and it is time for a change. Redefine. Fearing that you'll never be rich and therefore never happy can lead to making poor decisions in life. Pursuing get-rich-quick schemes and bad investments often results in mismanagement of time and money, which ultimately wastes your life. Once time is lost, it cannot be reclaimed. Chapter 4 Becoming a faith-filled person by leading six-step development out of pain into effectiveness. What is stopping breakthrough from happening now? Many times there's no one to blame but the person in the mirror. In the late 1980s, there was a pop song by Michael Jackson with lyrics that went something like, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. I am asking him to change his ways. And no reflection could be any clearer. If you want to make the world a better place, look at yourself and make a change. Those words still stir in my soul. I have contemplated the power of that song for years. It was such a great song that it's probably on some radio station right now. And everybody loved it. But does anyone hear? If so, why didn't anybody do what it said? If you want to make the world a better place, take a look in the mirror and make a change. Often, we allow past hurts and betrayals to declare who we have become. Stop waiting for other people to change. Look at the person staring at you in the mirror and make a positive change. The only thing stopping you from getting what you genuinely want in life is a defeated attitude. You express externally how you feel internally about who you are and what you can achieve. There is nothing else blocking you but the one you see when you look in the mirror. Most of the time, someone can have a proper education, a degree, or have completed specialized work as a professional and still not appreciate how far they've come. Often it is the person who had nothing or grew up in a challenging situation that goes out into the world to achieve much more than anyone could have dreamed. Courage is born in struggle, and it's God who gives us the faith to overcome those situations. Suppose you have a confidence issue. It's not too late to reconsider. If you feel defeated, just flip the script and start saying you are a winner. In this age of information, we are surrounded by social media, and what I call the share effect is ever-present. YouTube is the largest broadcasting channel on earth. It's free to upload nearly any video you want, yet most people will probably never use it. Some seek fame like big-name celebrities, but feeling remorse over whose video has the most likes is absurd. Life is not about likes. It's about your desires and God's plans for you. Don't base your life on what others have. Learn what is truly preventing you from having what you want by analyzing disempowering beliefs. Disempowering beliefs that almost stopped me. Below are pages from my personal journal, written during a time of mental anguish. They helped me break through my limiting beliefs while trying to discover God's plan for my life. Here are two of the most disempowering beliefs that almost stopped me. I am not able to go on. 
If I do not become rich, I will never truly be happy. For years, these two disempowering beliefs led me to feel I could never be truly successful. In my early 20s, when most people were partying and enjoying friends and fun, I was worried about my status. My future success wasn't happening as quickly as I thought it should, mainly because I had spent all of my energy comparing myself to a family member who seemed to enjoy all the benefits of being a complete success, or so I thought, until I met the man behind the curtain. Meeting the man behind the curtain. In the 1930s Hollywood film The Wizard of Oz, a teen girl named Dorothy and her little dog Toto are swept away by a tornado to the faraway land of Oz. Dorothy spends her time meeting strange yet familiar people who join her on a journey to find the Wizard of Oz, the only one who can help her get back to Kansas. Spoiler alert. If you haven't seen this movie that came out nearly a hundred years ago, it's safe to say I can burst your bubble of suspense. Dorothy, Toto, and their companions finally meet the wizard, only to find he has no real power, but is just a man making a lot of noise behind a curtain. For confidentiality, let's call him Big John. I was a huge fan of music. When I found out a family member was a producer, I began working on my musical abilities harder in hopes of being as successful as he was. Eventually, hard work got me a big break, but it wasn't what I expected. Instead of being a co-producer, I got the glamorous task of being a runner, a term for someone employed off the books. My job was to run errands of all sorts, not just for the boss, but for anyone who needed something. I saw it as an opportunity to shine. Through loyalty, I showcased all my clever ideas. I was excited, much like Dorothy, but after days of juggling tasks during the night, family in the evening, and work in the day, it all came crashing down, and so did my music career. Student becomes the master. Oddly, after this time, I carried a mental complex for a while. I couldn't explain what had happened to me. Somehow, I felt as if my chance to be successful had passed. I thought I was to blame, believing I was a distraction or unprofessional. I regretted asking to work with him. Looking back, I had felt like the opportunity for success was gone. I texted him a few times after leaving to apologize, but his replies were curt. Eventually, I moved on with my life, realizing that my dreams of working with him were no longer viable. I burned that bridge, and in doing so, I knew which direction to go forward. Learning life lessons shoved in my face. During this period, disempowering fear settled in my thoughts, increasing my failures. I started saying, I am not able to go on. However, the best way to succeed is to fail constantly and quickly. At that time, I didn't understand that. So my constant failures felt like snapshots of torment. Instead of using the experience to empower me, my dreams felt shattered. I saw his failure as an ominous picture of my own future. If he couldn't make it happen, how could I? Over time, I learned that these moments helped to define purpose and reshape destiny. I wouldn't go back to change anything. The bridge was burned, and I knew my way forward. Recognize that, like me, you may sometimes work so hard to build cloud castles in the sky, only to find no ladder to get up. My suggestion, build another, but this time with stairs. How to produce more pain. If you want change, start having more experiences to produce the growth needed to reach the next level. Think of a regular chair. It holds you up, but if you knock out its supports, both you and the chair fall. Like the chair, if you have a dream, you need something to stand up on. Use doubt-creating questions to rebuild your chair. Here are some from my personal journal to help analyze fears and frustrations. How do I feel about this situation? Do I feel able to continue? Will I miss other opportunities ahead? Have I joined with those who care about my best interests? If I open myself up to them, will I release or create frustrations? Get leverage. It is about motivation. Proverbs 5 verses 9 to 14 reads, Lest you lose your honor to others and your dignity to one who is cruel, lest strangers feast on your wealth and your toil enrich the house of another. At the end of your life, you will groan when your flesh and body are spent. You will say, How I hated discipline! How my heart spurned correction! I would not obey my teachers or turn my ear to my instructors! and I was soon in serious trouble in the assembly of God's people. I must change now. 
or my children will grow up apart from me. I must change, or I will end up alone, bitter, and wasted away. I must change, or I will lose the opportunity for reconciliation, education, healing, hearing God's voice, seeing the error of past situations, attracting new and good things, slave-proof your life, myth, debt is a tool and should be used to help create prosperity, truth, debt is not used by wealthy people nearly as much as we are led to believe, debt enslaves, choking the lives of so many friends and family members, most people are in debt up to their eyeballs, with no hope of help, if you are in debt, you lack freedom, Proverbs 22 verse 7, NIV states, the rich rule over the poor, and the borrower is slave to the lender. We never learn from our experiences until we view ourselves through the lens of others. Let me share with you another life lesson, this one from my experience with Cousin Ed, who once had dreams but lost them to a lifestyle of poor decisions and unfortunate circumstances. Ed's story reminded me of what it meant to avoid following the same path of debt and regret. Though life dealt Ed some harsh lessons, he continues to fight each day, and so can you, without having to face the same difficult journey. Get urgency. Change only happens when we have a sense of urgency. Create key points that you know, with certainty, have caused a sense of urgency in your life. These are keys to the castle you've built up in the sky, waiting for you to form a ladder and enter in. Your dreams are achievable if you take action now. Recognize that the fire under you is the motivation God has given to push you forward. Are you truly different than others? Consider that creating a positive and lasting change starts with taking that first step toward your goal. Change is inevitable, but effective change requires your willingness and God's help. Urgency is essential for those who take action to change. For change to be profound, ask yourself, is it not about whether I can do it, but whether I will do it? Your will is your motivation. The question remains, are you motivated with the kind of urgency that will shift you into dynamic action? Pain and pleasure are powerful forces, shaping our lives for greatness. Let me prove it to you. What are the things that shape your life? Take a few moments to think about the things that give you a sense of urgency and motivation. Here are some entries from my personal journal that help me create a sense of urgency because of my desire to make music. God allowed me to win a laptop through an internet contest. I didn't know how to make music, so God gave me a wife who sings. I didn't graduate high school, so God led me to a program where I could complete my education. These three key points have shaped the last decade of my life. They would never have happened if I hadn't felt a sense of urgency. Reflect on your own life and identify key events that have created a sense of urgency. These are the keys to the castle waiting for you to form a ladder and climb up. Imagine your dreams inside that castle, but without urgency, they could all burn away. It's up to you to become your own rescuer, braving the flames to save those dreams before they disappear forever. This is who you are now, and this is why you're here, to create a ladder that will take you to the top. The devil's cunning devices, but no new tricks. There's no need for the devil to invent new tricks when the old ones still work. Here's how you can gain victory over your enemy, by mapping out where you've been and finding the best route out of it. Remember, his only job is to kill, steal, and destroy John 10 verse 10. On your journey, watch both the company you keep and the path you choose to follow. Trust in God's guidance to lead you toward the promised land. What God says is best is best, though all the men in the world are against it. John Bunyan, The Pilgrim's Progress Often, you'll face a choice between following God's direction and succumbing to others' opinions. My experience has shown that when you're called to be a leader or want control over your life, you stand out, and this may draw the resentment of others. But the path to success is one of discernment and confidence in God's Word. A wise older woman once told me, People are like clothes. You must wear them loosely. People may criticize or make exaggerated statements, but we know these things often come from a desire for change, whether consciously or not. Trust that the love and support you need will come from God and will help you surround yourself with like-minded people. Confidence and Breakthroughs Confidence is believing that God's plan works for the good of those who love Him 
and are called according to his purposes. To build confidence, ask yourself probing questions that reveal the truth of your situation. Questions are like flares in the night sky, guiding you toward rescue. Ask yourself, what will I miss in life if I do not make this shift now? Am I willing to stay stuck in a time loop of regret? How would my life change if I lived with faith and pursued growth? True success starts with breakthroughs now, not in the future. Joshua 24 verse 15 reads, As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. This scripture continues to validate kingdom-minded people in every century. But for this promise to be effective, we must live in faith even during crises. The Bible says that a curse does not come without cause, which means if there is a curse, there is a reason why. Living according to God's plan brings blessings. Living outside of it brings difficulty. When is it in my best interest? If you lose anything, remember you have enough faith to get it back. God recognizes faith that works. Faith requires action, and it's essential to claim more faith during tough times. James 2 verse 26 states that faith without works is dead. Moving forward in life requires this type of working faith, which leads to true wealth. Imagine a wealthy businessman who, after a busy day, goes home to a large, beautiful house. But despite all his success, he feels a void, lacking faith and a sense of purpose. True wealth is not measured in possessions, but in purpose and relationship with God. The cost of not changing. Consider what it's already costing you mentally, emotionally, physically, financially, and spiritually. To stay where you are. Are you willing to continue paying that price? Mentally, anguish, regrets, and self-oppression. Emotionally, wasted time in relationships, self-rejection, and fear. Physically, health issues and unsafe associations, leading to discomfort and complacency. Financially, lack of wealth, unnecessary hardships, and a deficit that prevents stability. Spiritually, a damaged faith, feeling estranged from God's blessings. These costs highlight why you must make the pain of not changing so intense that it propels you to act. Associate positive feelings with change, so you'll desire it more and more. The key to transformation lies in linking your motivation to growth and a greater purpose. Step out of the mirror and into the new you. Step away from that cracked image in the mirror and into the vision of the new you. You have the potential to be great. Believe that God has brought you into a new season and has a plan for your life. Arise from your troubles. Nothing can prevent you from living a blessed life. God is leading you. So have a little faith. Chapter 5. Inspired Desire for Their Benefit. Making desire burn brighter, like a fire, draws other people to us. At what point in life does a person decide what they truly want? The following questions will serve as a guide to help you discover the path necessary to achieve your goals. Fixing our mind on exactly what we desire. To go anywhere. You must first be able to see it. Remember, what man can conceive, he can achieve. As a man thinks, so he is. Proverbs 23 verse 7. Determine exactly what you are willing to give in exchange for what you desire. There is no such thing as something for nothing. 1 Corinthians 13 verse 11. Establish a definite date when you intend to possess what you desire. Go in and possess the land. Deuteronomy 4 verse 1. Create a concrete plan for achieving your desire and begin immediately. There is never a perfect time to be ready or to put a plan into action. Exodus 10 verse 4. Write out, in a few sentences, a clear and concise statement of what you intend to acquire, including a time limit for its acquisition, what you intend to give in exchange, and the plan through which you intend to achieve it. Habakkuk 2 verse 2. Read the written statement aloud twice daily, once before sleeping and once after waking. As you read, use your imagination to see and feel yourself already in possession of what you desire. Mark 11 verse 23. How to fulfill a dream with the self-confidence formula. God has given you the ability to achieve by having a desire that fulfills your definite purpose in life. So put a demand on yourself to continuously pursue actions that move you toward fulfillment. Thought is powerful. Your mind will reproduce outward manifestations that progressively transform your imagination into reality. Take time to meditate on a verse of scripture and let it wash your thoughts for 30 minutes daily. 
Practice six exercises for five minutes each, where you sit quietly and focus on God's Word, creating a clear mental picture of what you desire. This practice, known as auto-suggestion, allows your mind to process information and return a suitable physical manifestation through the necessary actions. Remember, it is essential to continue trying until you develop sufficient self-confidence for attainment. Romans 4 verse 17 My definite chief aim in life I fully realize that no wealth or position can endure unless built upon the foundation of truth and the plan God has for my life. So, I place a demand on myself to never engage in events that do not benefit both myself and others. I will succeed by knowing that I am a living magnet and that I wish to draw the cooperation of other people. I will only request the help of those who are willing to serve others, thereby eliminating emotions of doubt, envy, hatred, jealousy, and selfishness that could undermine my plans to produce greater works of love for humanity. I know that a negative attitude toward others can never bring me success, so I avoid negativity from others who thrive on creating it. Therefore, I will give people a reason to have faith, showing them my works first. James 2 verse 18 Now, sign your name to this confession and commit it to memory by repeating it aloud once daily. Do so with faith believing it will progressively influence the way you think, the actions you take, and what you believe is possible. So you may become a more self-reliant and successful person. Momentum creates change. The force I could create if I change right now is, God will speedily open doors for me that I have not been able to open. I will be propelled into a place that was long ago made for me. And at this very moment, I will see it clearly with my own eyes. The momentum of possessing it will be great and mighty. I would change my life for the good, getting all the desires I want fulfilled in good measure. I could think faster, smarter, quicker, and brighter, with more passion and precision and focus. I could accomplish all the goals of my heart and set them with ease. The right people will take complete notice of me as I present myself like a fresh wind. My business activities will be more successful. I will be on the road to being a wealthy and rich man. I could gain the hearts of those I know and love, and those who will pledge themselves to my cause. I would gain new friends and love from them. I could grow my faith rapidly. I could grow the love and passion I have for my spouse and children by respect and admiration, and likewise, honor my friends and family with more love. What other things could I accomplish through change? I could accomplish knowing exactly how to defeat the devil in my mind. I could win the battle of my mind. I could know my purpose. I could knock out all the folly, foolishness, and laziness learned and condition myself with brand new faith. I could be the person my parents or my family have never been, a person of great integrity and God-fearing. I could break that generational curse forever. How will my family and friends feel? My family and friends will feel happy. My spouse will love that I am a new man slash woman. My children will praise me. My friends will be astonished. My family will be proud. My family will love me for who I have become and will want to know how I did it. How much happier will I be? I will be genuinely happy. I will be happy enough to smile when I am down because everything works for my good. I will have happiness at my every command. I will call it forth daily and often. I will lounge in the light of my newly found happiness and be content with it, happy at the thought of gaining more. Interrupt the limiting pattern. Leverage creates change. Yes, it is that simple. To get a new result, you must do what others would not expect, such as a new action or word that breaks the old unwanted pattern. Try a change of scenery. Go outside, make a silly face, or make a noise that makes people laugh. What are some of the most enjoyable ways you can interrupt the limiting, destructive patterns of frustration, overwhelm, or worry? Clap your hands, shout hallelujah, and rejoice to give God praise and thanks that every day you get the chance to break through. Tell the devil. Isaiah 54 verse 17 says, No weapon formed against me shall prosper, and God will reign and rule my house. So you got to get out of my house. Then call on the name of Jesus and sing hymns and other inspirational songs. I like the song Stronger by Mandisa that she sang on Good Morning America as a war cry against breast cancer. It just reminds me that there is still hope. Visualize change through imagination. Imagine a situation that has disturbed you in the past. 
Now picture yourself in an old-time record store. Smell the old vinyl records. Next, walk over to the section entitled My Favorite Tune. This signifies the situation that has disturbed you so many times. See all of this happening as a full-color movie. See yourself walking over to the section, grabbing, then placing it on the record player. See yourself placing the headphones over your ears and beginning to play the song. Notice how when your favorite tune begins to play, you start to sway to the music, hear the lyrics, feel the melody of it all, and suddenly someone walks by and bumps the record player, and the needle screeches across the record. Notice the response on your face. See it as if it's happening at this very moment. Now, do it again. This time, start from the beginning when you place the record, your memory of the bad situation. Then take that record and play broken pieces of it. See the person bump the player again, and notice the look on your face. Do it again. This time turn the imagination into a cartoon. Now, open your eyes. Sit up in your chair with a big silly grin on your face. Breathe deeply, and close your eyes. This time run the entire image backward as fast as you can so that everything happens in reverse. If someone was yelling at you, watch them swallow their words. Then run through the cartoon forward again in fast motion. This will be your new model for conditioning desire and create the inspiration you need to complete difficult tasks. One year goals and dreams. Take a moment to write down a few of your personal goals and dreams. Do not edit them. Write continuously for five minutes. Do not think about it. Just fill the paper up and do not stop. Set a timer and produce. Great. Maybe you found out some things about yourself. There are a multitude of other things that you may complete as a personal goal within a year. However, you must first outline your plans for effective change and see to their definite completion by writing them down. Now, go back and label the goals from 1 to 10 in no particular order. Chapter 6. Becoming a Growth Person Understanding the Value of Confession The Starting Point of All Achievement the method of Napoleon Hill's classic self-help book Think and Grow Rich serves as a foundation. I want to share a few paragraphs that illustrate how you can benefit from the principles of Dr. Hill's greatest work. The secret to all achievement and all earned riches lies in the origin of an idea. If you are ready for success, start by focusing on applying yourself to discover new life. And with these few principles, you will possess one half of what it takes to accomplish your major goal. You will recognize the other half the moment it reaches your mind. A positive mental attitude. Sound health. Harmony in relationships. Freedom from fear. Hope of future achievement. The capacity for applied faith. Willingness to share one's blessings with others. Engagement in a labor of love. Open-mindedness towards all subjects and people. Complete self-discipline. Wisdom for understanding people. Financial security. Make a guide for your life alongside these principles. Question how you align with each in your daily activities and focus, or you will never reach your destination. A self-reflection checklist. Consider the following questions to help redirect your attention and reach your future destination. Have I achieved the goal I set for this year? If not, should I set a definite goal with a 30 or 90 day focus as a step toward my major life objectives? Have I provided service of the best possible quality? How could I improve this service? Have I provided service in the greatest possible quantity? Has my conduct been harmonious and cooperative? Have I let procrastination affect my efficiency? And if so, how much have I improved my personality? And in what ways have I followed my plans through to completion? Have I made decisions promptly? Have any of the six basic fears, poverty, criticism, ill health, loss of love, old age, death, hindered my efficiency? Have I been overly cautious or too careless? Reflect on each point and adjust your actions to improve efficiency in the coming year. Leading others starts with leading yourself. Every leader's credibility starts with self-expression. I've faced my own challenges in moving forward, making changes to achieve success. When I started writing this book, I established a daily positive confession and organized a plan with a group who, though unnamed, ended up as part of my journey. Ultimately, I realized I couldn't progress without shedding dead weight. The cause of that transformation was a renewed mind, a reference to Romans 12 verse 2. You must achieve this renewed mind before your own miracle unfolds. The habit of helping people 
who don't seek help often hinders us. By refocusing my thoughts and actions, I progressively manifested success in every area of my life. The secret success formula. Write it and speak it every day. I will concentrate my mind for 30 minutes daily on the person I intend to be. Creating a mental picture and transforming that image into reality through practical service. I desire only what I consistently envision, and my mind will seek it out practically. I will devote myself to developing the factors I selected from Napoleon Hill's principles. This formula will serve as a map of your purpose and help shape the next five years or demi-decade into a successful future. Key Principles for the Demi-Decade A Qualitative Price for My Services An Annual Salary Plan for Five Years Applying Principles Necessary to Provide Valuable Service Avoiding Transactions that Don't Benefit All Parties Involved Understanding that Success Attracts Cooperation Renewing Your Mind Sign Your Demi-Decade Plan Repeat it aloud daily and memorize it. This process will bring new influences to guide you toward your vision, becoming a better you. Understand that urgency is tied to God's plan. To become better, you must press forward, be positive, develop better habits, form strong relationships, embrace your current position, cultivate an inner strategy, maintain passion. A final question. Are you leading? Am I walking out in front or taking a stroll by myself? Your leadership matters. Technology advances rapidly, making our impact reach further. But self-leadership remains paramount. As Habakkuk 2 verses 2 to 3 reminds us, The Lord answered me and said, Write the vision, and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak, and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. How can others read what we haven't written or follow if they don't know our path? Preparing for the appointed time. The years pass by swiftly. They do not tarry. And the time will come. The question is, will you be ready? There are seven R.S., or levels of readiness, that contribute to your personal development. By focusing on these, you can spend more time in a labor of love, producing what truly impacts your life. Reorganization. Focus on high-priority tasks. Restructuring. Prioritize actions that contribute the most value to others. Re-engineering. Continuously outsource, downsize, and eliminate non-essential tasks. Reinventing. Ask yourself what needs to change in your worldview to prepare for tomorrow. Reevaluation. Recognize that the future will differ greatly from the present. Refocusing. Commit your energy to family life and work responsibilities. Regain control. Choose to feel in control of life rather than being a backseat driver. Living the master's way. Being calm and confident is a powerful display of success. Recall a time you felt this way. Intensify that memory and ask, What made you feel this way? What did you hear, feel, or see? Focused exercise. Gather as much detail as possible. When ready, use one word to summarize the experience. Then, sit up straight. Pull your shoulders back, look up, take a deep breath, raise your chin, and close your eyes. Clench your fist, intensify the memory, then unclench and open your eyes. The more you internalize this feeling, the more natural it will become in your daily life, boosting your confidence where you previously struggled. The Causes of Failure According to Napoleon Hill's The Law of Success, 31 major causes contribute to failure. Reflect on this list, noting any causes that may have held you back, and consider the suggested counteractions. Unfavorable hereditary background. Seek the aid of a mastermind group. Lack of a well-defined purpose. Set clear goals and dreams. Lack of ambition. Seek inspiration. Insufficient education. Consider options like a GED, Udemy courses, or EDX certifications. Lack of self-discipline. Use practices like prayer and fasting. Ill health. Focus on a balanced lifestyle with exercise, positive thoughts, and regular checkups. Unfavorable environmental influences. Expand your social circle. Procrastination. Act now. Lack of persistence. Build self-belief. Negative personality. Cultivate hope for the future. Uncontrolled sexual urges. Channel energy into goal achievement. Desire for something without effort. 
seek therapy, or loved one support. Lack of decision-making, take charge. 6. Basic fears, poverty, criticism, etc. Embrace courage. Wrong mate selection, be open-minded and seek harmony. Overcaution, develop trust. Poor business associates, make necessary changes. Superstition and prejudice. Maintain faith and open-mindedness. Wrong career choice, consider a new vocation. Lack of concentrated effort, specialize in one skill, towards one chief aim. Indiscriminate spending, save and budget. Lack of enthusiasm, cultivate readiness. Intolerance, adopt a new perspective. Imbalance, strive for balance. Inability to cooperate, share benefits willingly. Misuse of power, apply humility and a willing spirit. Intentional dishonesty. Remember the law of retribution. Egotism and vanity. Give credit to God. Guessing instead of thinking. Avoid uninformed guesses. Lack of capital makes small-scale plans. Other causes. Learn from each failure and rediscover your purpose. Personal reflections on past failures. Believing in others' visions rather than my own. Spending too much time on details over action. Lacking faith in God and self-confidence. Clinging to the past. Harboring jealousy. Being impatient. Accountability and intelligent design. The Bible's opening sentence. In the beginning God created heaven and earth. Genesis 1 verse 1. Suggests a concept akin to intelligent design. Authors Michael B. and Stephen Meyer explain that our minds recognize intelligent design in the purposeful arrangement of parts, such as words in a book. We know that a mind must be behind such arrangements. Key questions. Are you using intelligence in planning? Are you actively discovering success factors? Are you aware of any intelligent plans for your life? As an intelligent leader, your focus should be on personal service, mastering the six primal fears, and fostering a genuine interest in those who follow you. Inventory of personal traits for leadership. Rate yourself from 1 to 10 on the following traits. Materialism and greed. Purpose alignment. Harmony. Self-confidence. Decisiveness. Vision to help others. Leadership ability. Enthusiasm. Self-discipline. Service orientation. Charisma. Accurate thinking. Cooperation. Task completion. Mistake recognition. Tolerance. Integrity and self-control. Honesty. The golden rule. Treat others as you wish to be treated. If you cannot embody this truth, you are not preparing to lead. Action and following. Take action now, do it now. Many leaders today operate without mentors or authoritative guidance, limiting their potential to grow. Jesus, the Son of God, sought guidance. Luke 2 verses 43 to 49 describes how Jesus stayed behind in the temple to learn from teachers. And when they had fulfilled the days, as they returned, the child Jesus tarried behind in Jerusalem, and Joseph and his mother knew not of it. But they supposing him to have been in the company, went on a day's journey, and they sought him among their kinsfolk and acquaintances, and when they found him not, they turned back again to Jerusalem, seeking him. Certainly, below is a structured and organized version of your text with headings, lists, and bullet points for readability. I did not change any of the original content. If Jesus needed teachers, then how much do we need them? After three days, they found him in the temple sitting among the doctors, both hearing them and asking questions. Those who heard him were astonished by his understanding. When they saw him, his mother said, Son, why hast thou thus dealt with us? Behold, thy father and I have sought thee sorrowing. Jesus replied, How is it that ye sought me? Wist ye not that I must be about my father's business? This passage illustrates that even Jesus needed guidance. Life is designed for us to learn from those more experienced. If you are actively pursuing a labor of love, you will find help through genuine leadership. If you are not first a follower, you should not expect to succeed. Genuine leadership involves leading others to a destination. Ask yourself, where am I going? If you are unsure, seek a mentor or a leader to guide you. The audacity of being overly concerned about image. Consider the following as you assess your leadership readiness. Faculty, do I follow? If so, I should only expect the rewards of a follower, not those of a leader. Farce, do I make decisions as an intelligent follower? If so, I gain the knowledge of my leader. 
Force. Many leaders were once great followers. Following a genuine leader's greatness is crucial for personal development. Am I missing the signs of my service to God? It is unhealthy to be a know-it-all. This attitude can dull your mind and impede growth. James 1 verse 5 advises, If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that giveth to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Intelligent design in our plans ensures favorable outcomes. Luke 2 verse 52 states, And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature, and in favor with God and man. Even Jesus needed to grow and gain favor. Characteristics of a person with favor. In service to others. Unwavering courage. Necessary for leadership and fulfilling duties. Self-control. Sets a strong example for followers. Justice and fairness. Essential for retaining respect. Decisiveness. Avoids double-mindedness. Intelligent plans. Provides clear direction and prevents failure. Doing more than minimum. Shows love for God and commitment. Pleasing personality. Aids in successful leadership. Sympathy and understanding. Helps relate to others' emotions. Mastery of detail. Critical for effective leadership. Responsibility. Takes accountability for mistakes. Cooperation. Necessary for teamwork and effective leadership. If no one is following, you are not leading. You are simply walking ahead. Commitment. A must or maybe. Commitment is vital to fulfill your life's calling. Get into the game by applying cooperative principles to inspire others to follow and become leaders themselves. Effective leadership involves two types. Leadership by consent, achieved with follower sympathy. Leadership by force, lacks follower sympathy. History shows that forceful leadership, as exemplified by figures like Saddam Hussein and Osama bin Laden, often ends poorly. Genuine leadership grows from respect and understanding. Ten major causes of failure in leadership. Inability to organize. Effective leadership requires mastery of details. Unwillingness to be humble. The greatest leaders serve others. Luke 22 verse 26. Income expectancy. The world compensates for value, not effort. Fear. Avoid letting fears like poverty, criticism, or death hinder you. No vision. Where there is no vision, the people perish. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Selfishness. A leader shares honor with others. Lack of self-discipline. Intemperance undermines leadership. Disloyalty. Trust is essential to lead. Forced authority. Using fear to lead is ineffective. Titles. Titles alone do not earn respect. Genuine leadership does. Are you committed to your call? In the 21 Irrefutable Laws of Leadership, Dr. John C. Maxwell discusses applying the law of the lid. List major goals. Identify goals requiring a year or more to achieve, 5 to 10 items. Determine the participation or cooperation needed from others. The method in six steps. Fix the exact amount of money you desire. Determine what you will give in exchange for it. Set a definite date for acquiring the money. Create a clear plan to obtain it. Write a clear statement of your goal. Read your written statement twice daily. Envisioning yourself already possessing the money. Knowing your purpose means grasping the dreams within you and acting confidently. Recite these words and move toward your calling. I know that I have the ability to achieve the object of my definite purpose in life, and I demand of myself the confident action necessary to attain it. I promise myself to move swiftly towards my calling, realizing that my good thoughts, given by God, reveal the plans He has for me. I believe that if I act in faith, my imagination will become my reality. Influence your thoughts and actions. Success requires conditioning your mind to attract cooperation by serving others. Eliminate contempt, envy, hatred, jealousy, and selfishness by cultivating love and kindness. Negative attitudes hinder both success and happiness. Every achievement and earned fortune starts with an idea. These principles help you recognize and walk confidently toward your path. Positive mental attitude, good health, strong relationships, fearlessness, hope, faith, blessing others, labor of love, open-mindedness, self-discipline, wisdom, financial security. Chapter 7. You can be the possessor. Using your keys to enhance excellence.
Unlocking Your Path to Excellence. Throughout this book, you've been equipped with principles to overcome obstacles that previously hindered your success. In this concluding chapter, you'll learn how to apply these principles to unlock your future potential. The key you now possess aligns you with the present moment, emphasizing that the time you have left is crucial. This key acts as a guide, enabling you to achieve more, have more, and do more. Remember, who God intends you to be is who He created you to be, and He will support you if you commit to doing your part. Essential Keys to Success Pressing Forward Being Positive Developing Better Habits Forming Better Relationships Embracing Your Place in Life Evolving Your Spiritual Life Staying Passionate Daily Confessions in God's Storehouse Speak these confessions over your life daily. I will have abundance and glory. My crooked ways will become straight. I will see his countenance. The angels will rejoice in my salvation. There are no impurities. God shows me favor. The blessed are his children. I will soar like an eagle. Abundance and joy will be mine. I am the light that shines over dark seas. God has set me free. Jesus is Lord, and all are as Jesus. There is no sin that God cannot bear. I am set free. I am set free. My clear and concise statement. The time to acquire it is now. The End God's Secret Storehouse The Blueprint of Desire By Terence Wilburn